Welcome to the tutorial. This video will show you how to insert images in grant applications. This guide was developed at the request of the University of Michigan Medical School, Office of Research. However, the steps can be used to insert images in any Word document, not just a grant application. This tutorial addresses the page limit for the research section of the NIH grant application. Inserting graphics using this method will help you comply with the page limit. The instructions will be using a text box to insert graphics into a Word document. This method works for both Windows and Macs and all versions of Word. You can use two methods for accomplishing the task of inserting graphics and captions into your Word document. Method 1, which is not recommended, is directly inserting the image the caption as a caption or text box, and then formatting and positioning both in the document. This method is not recommended because it is very labor-intensive and tends to exceed the page limit. Method 2 is inserting the image and caption into a text box, formatting the image and caption in the text box, and then positioning the text box in the document. This method will be covered in the tutorial. There are two helpful hints. First, clicking the paragraph symbol on the Home tab in Word on Windows. This will show the document formatting. Second, selecting the text box will make a special Format tab appear on the menu bar. Wrapping and positioning the text box can be accessed from this tab. The toolbars in Word 2007 and Word 2010 look slightly different, but the options are the same. On Macs, the paragraph symbol and the formatting tab are in slightly different places on the toolbar. There are three terms you should know for the text box method. First, grouping. Grouping objects will combine them so that you can work with them as though they were a single object. You can ungroup a group of objects at any time and then regroup them later. The text box automatically groups whatever is inside the text box. Second, positioning. Positioning options help you see where an image will appear on your page. This is most useful when you've grouped an image and its caption. Third, wrapping. Wrapping determines how text will flow around your image. Positioning and text wrapping options are available from the Object Format toolbar for all images. A shortcut to text wrapping options can be found by right-clicking on the image, then selecting Text Wrapping. There are several different types of text wrapping. First, in line with text. This is the default option, and it will break your text with sentences before and after the image appearing at the top and bottom of the image. This is not ideal for most graphics in grant applications because it takes up too much space. Tight. This option wraps words immediately to the border of the image. This option generally conserves more space than square wrapping, but can make text flow confusing or there's distinction between text and caption unclear. Square. This option allows you to wrap text, depending on the size of the image, and leaves white space equidistant around the image. This option generally gives the cleanest look. As you can see, here's in line with text. Your image appears where your cursor was when you inserted the image. There's a great deal of white space. Tight. You can move the image anywhere in your document and the text will wrap around its edges. There will be little white space between the text and image, but sometimes it makes it difficult to read the text because sentences are broken around the image. Square. You can move your image anywhere in the document and the text will wrap around a square space that surrounds your image. This is recommended in this tutorial. Do not use the forward or behind text wrapping options. Forward will place the image on top of your text, obscuring some of your words. Behind places the image behind the text. This may be appropriate for a watermark, but makes it impossible for someone to view your image or table. The remainder of this tutorial will walk you through the following steps for using the text box. First, inserting the text box. Next, inserting an image. Inserting a caption. Then wrapping and placing the text box in the document. 
Your first step is to open the Word document that contains your grant application. You can also open a separate document with your captions if you have them typed. If you do not have your captions typed, have your captions ready in hard copy or type them in from memory. To begin, click on the paragraph symbol to turn on the paragraph formatting. This will allow you to see where you have typed enter, tab, or space in your document to help you manage and minimize the white space. Decide where you want to insert your image. This starting placement does not have to be the perfect final placement. You can move the image around in the document at any point once it is inserted. Generally, you will want to start near the final location, but again, it's just an estimate. Because I am inserting Figure 1, I'm going to select a spot near to the mention of Figure 1 in the text. It is useful to insert the image at the start of a line, so I'll place my cursor at the start of the sentence and click in front of the word congenital. Next, insert ample white space by using the Enter key. Hit Enter until you have a large space in which to work. Don't worry, you'll remove the extra white space later. Next, insert the text box. Head to the Insert tab on the menu bar. Click Insert. Then click text box. You want to select the option to draw a text box. Your cursor will change into a crosshairs. Place the cursor in the top left hand corner of the white space. Then hold down the mouse and drag to draw the text box that covers the entire white space. Then release your mouse. Now you want to insert the image inside the text box. Make sure your cursor is flashing inside the box. If not, click once inside the text box. Head back to the Insert tab. Now click Picture. You click Picture regardless of whether you are inserting a figure, table, or chart. Navigate to the place on your machine or network where you have the images saved. Select the image you want to insert and click Insert. Now you're ready to add the caption. If you have your caption in a separate Word document and the caption is relatively short, now is the time to head to that document. An example of a relatively short caption is the caption for Table 1. If your caption is about this length, highlight and copy the caption onto your clipboard. If you don't have your caption typed, or if your caption is longer, skip this step. An example of a longer caption is the caption for Figure 1. Now head back to your grant application. To insert the caption, right-click on the image. In the menu that appears, select Insert Caption. The caption box will display. First, select the label for your caption in the Options section using the Label menu. You can label your caption as an equation, figure, or table. Here I'll select Figure. Next, you can decide if you want your caption positioned above or below your image using the Position menu. Here I'll select Below Image. Third, use the numbering button if you want to change from Arabic numerals to Roman numerals or letters. Unfortunately, the caption area has a character limit. If you have a short caption that you have copied from a separate Word document, paste it into the caption box. If you have a lengthier caption, 
You will not be able to paste the entire caption here. The caption will display, but the end will be cut off when the box reaches its character limit. You will enter the caption later. If you have a caption handwritten or in memory, you can type the caption here, again if it's relatively short. If not, you'll enter it later. Go ahead and click OK, and your caption will appear. Because I had a lengthier caption, I'm now going to go to my Word document to copy and paste the caption. You could also type the caption into the text box at this point if you did not already have it typed. You'll see that there is extra white space below the caption. To remove this, simply click on the last line of the white space and use your backspace key to delete the excess white space. You can format the text of the caption just like regular text. You can change the font style, size, color, and weight. Please refer to your grant for specific formatting requirements. As an example, I'm going to change the font size to 10. To do this, simply highlight the caption text and change the font as you would normal text. If your image appears too small or too large in the text box, now is the time to resize it. To resize the image, click on the image and use the handles to resize it as you wish. Be sure to use the handles on the image, not the text box. You must click on the image to display the image handles. Now resize the text box around the image and caption. To resize the text box, click on the outline of the text box and use the handles to resize it you wish. You know you are on the border of the text box when the crosshair symbols appear. Be sure that you do not cut off your caption. To make your text box longer or shorter, again, click on the borders of the text box and use the handle to adjust the length of the box. Now the text box looks right, it is time to position it in the text. First, click on the outline of the text box. Go up to the Format tab and select Text Wrapping Square. Next, remove the white space. To do this, place your cursor where you did to add the white space. Click. Use the backspace key to remove all of the white space. You should see the text wrapping squarely around the text box. Third, drag and drop the text box into the correct position. To do this, make sure you're clicking on the border of the text box. Hold down the mouse and drag the text box into the position. You can move the text box around as much as you wish until you have it in the position you like. Repeat the entire process of inserting an image to insert a second image if you wish. Word will automatically number your captions for you. If for any reason you change the order of your images in the document, be sure to go to Print Preview. This will update the document fields and renumber your captions. To use the text box method, you'll need to save all the files you wish to insert as image files. If you have created a table or chart in Word, Excel, or other format, use screen capture software such as the Snipping Tool, Snagit, or Jing to take a screenshot of your table or chart and save it as a JPEG file.
Snipping Tool is software that is generally available on computers with Windows Vista or Windows 7. To find out more, head to a search engine and type in Snipping Tool. Jing is software that is available for download online. Enter Jing into a search engine and download the free version. Thank you for watching.